up guys, it's Matt B and in this video we are going to be looking at the Garmin Forerunner 965. The Garmin Forerunner 965 is Garmin's top of the line running watch. Now, of course it does a lot more than running and I would say that you could pretty much track any activity that you can think of. Well that's probably not true but it tracks a lot of activities and I've been using it as my primary running watch and of course to track all the other activities that I do. Weight training, elliptical, I've used it when I'm jumping around doing a dance class with my wife and it tracks all of that like a champ. So in this video I'm going to be telling you all about the features of the Forerunner 965 and we're going to be comparing it to some other running watches that you may consider in place of this. All right, Garmin 4 on a 965. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get started with those disclosures. The Garmin 4 on a 965 was sent to me for the purpose of review by the team over at Roadrunner Sports. However, Roadrunner Sports has no editorial input into this video and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started with price. The Garmin 4 on a 965 will cost you $600. Yes, it's a pretty penny, certainly not cheap. But of course, price is all relative. And when you compare it to some of Garmin's other watches, the Epics, the Phoenix, that are a lot bigger, a lot more rugged, and yet have very similar features, $600 for the 4 on a 965 is almost a good deal. If not a good deal, then at least the price is justifiable. Okay, let's do a very quick rundown of the specs. The Garmin 4 on a 965 measures 47.2 by 47.2 by 13.2. It weighs in at 53 grams. The watch ships with a silicone band. It's kind of like a two-tone silicone band. It's a different color on the bottom than it is on the top. And although the band that comes with the watch is not a quick fit design, you can't just take it off. They are removable bands and you can replace them with any 22 millimeter standard band. So let's say you wanted to take this off and replace it with a Garmin quick fit band. You would just get the tool, remove the band, put the pin back in, and then the quick fit straps will hook right on. And of course, you could also buy any number of styles or colors of bands on Amazon that would fit this watch. It is an industry standard 22 millimeters. Now the case of the watch is a fiber reinforced polymer, but the 4965 does have a titanium bezel, which certainly gives it a nice premium look. And the lens or glass covering the screen is Corning Gorilla Glass 3 DX. Now I did say that this was a good deal compared with some of the other watches like the Phoenix or the Epix. But on the Phoenix and the Epics, you do have the option to get a sapphire lens. Now, Corning Gorilla Glass 3 DX is not as strong as a sapphire lens, and that of course is reflected in the price of this only being $600. However, Corning Gorilla Glass 3 DX, I assume is pretty strong. As of the making of this video, I've been wearing this watch for about a month, and I don't have any scratches whatsoever. And I'm not the most careful person. I tend to bang this around quite a bit just to sheer clumsiness. Now, the biggest feature of the 4 Runner 965 is the AMOLED screen. And get this, the 4 Runner 965 has a 1.4 inch AMOLED screen, which makes it, at the timing of this video, the biggest AMOLED screen on a watch that Garmin makes. And it's beautiful and it's bright and it has 454 by 454 pixels. So all the graphics are nice and bright and sharp and crisp. It is really a treat to look at. This would be a good time to point out that you do have the option of buying the Forerunner 955, which is very basically the non AMOLED version of the 965. The 955 is a transflective memory and pixel display. But at least for me, once you have gone AMOLED, it's very difficult to go back to that transflective memory and pixel. Also, the 955 is just a little thicker and the display is just a little smaller. But as far as the guts and the sensors and the GPS chip, it's the same in the 965 as it is in the 955. Now, the Garmin 4 on 965 does have a touchscreen display, which if you're like me, a touchscreen display isn't always the best thing when you're using a sports watch. But the Garmin 4 on 965 also has a five button setup. We have three here on the left side, two on the right side, and the buttons can control everything that you can control by touch on the screen. Now, by default, in the activity modes, the touch screen is disabled, which is absolutely the best way to ship this watch because there is no way that I have time to be messing around touching the screen when I'm out for a run. But with everything else, especially navigating maps, and we'll get to the mapping in just a second, the touch screen display is just very smooth. It's very responsive and you can just select it and then scroll through the options and it moves just as well as most smartphones. Right, if you're buying a GPS watch, I think one of the main selling points is battery life. And Garmin has done a very good job with the 4 965. Now, of course, as you know, an AMOLED screen is a very battery heavy option to have on a watch. It trains the battery very quickly. Now, of course, there are lots of options. You can have the always on display. You can have the tilt to wake. So when you roll your wrist up, the AMOLED screen comes on and everything in between. There are three different brightness settings. So you can pretty much control how long you make the battery last. But in Garmin's test scenarios, they say that the 4 and the 965 will last up to 23 days in smartwatch mode. Now, smartwatch mode is receiving notifications. It's giving you your weather forecast. You know, using it just as a watch rather than a sports watch, so it's not using GPS. So 23 days, 
I think it's a pretty solid battery life. But of course, you are not going to be buying the 4 and a 965 to use it as a regular watch. You want to use it to track your activities. You want to go for a run. You want to go for a ride. You want to go snowboarding. You want to play pickleball. I already said it, the Garmin 4 and a 965 tracks a lot of activities. Oh, and before we get into battery life, this would be a good point to tell you that the Garmin 4 and a 965 has 32 gigabytes of storage. That's a lot of storage. It also has the ability to play offline music and it pairs with Spotify, Amazon Music or Deezer. So if you have subscriptions to any of those services, you can take songs and move them onto your watch. The 4 and a 965 also has multi-band GPS, so it will connect to all the satellites, one of the satellites or several satellites at the same time in order to give you the best GPS lock, hopefully increasing accuracy. We'll be doing some testing on that in just a few minutes. But Garmin reports that in GPS only mode, the 4 and a 965 will last you 31 hours. So effectively you could go out for a 31 hour run and you could track it the whole way. Now the reason I brought up the music and the storage before talking about battery life is because in GPS mode, when we normally have a 31 hour battery life, if you're listening to music at the same time, that battery life decreases to 10.5 hours. So ultimately, listening to music is a much bigger battery drain than actually tracking satellites in space. Just keep that in mind. The 4 and a 965 also features Garmin Sat IQ mode. And basically this is a battery saving feature in which the 4 and a 965 will detect which satellites are around and which satellites are needed and it will only connect to the satellites that are needed when they are needed. So for example, if you are running out in an open field, it's likely it doesn't need to use as much battery that it would take it to connect to two satellites at once. So in that instance, it would connect to one satellite. And then if you were to run into a city and there were tall buildings, or perhaps you were running in an area where there were tall mountains around, it could then use the multiband GPS to connect to several satellites at the same time, which would increase your accuracy. And then of course, if you run out into an open field and it only needs to connect to one, it will do that. Now, throughout all of my testing, I have been using the sat IQ mode. But now that I've explained what sat IQ mode is, when you're in sat IQ mode, the Forerunner 965 will last 22 hours. So basically that is 22 hours at the most premium and battery saving GPS setting that we can get. And then of course, if you are using sat IQ mode and you are listening to music at the same time, that battery time decreases to nine and a half hours. Garmin 4 Forerunner 965 does have the standard four pin connector for the charging cord, but with the 965, they are now shipping it with a USB-C charging end. So I guess they're just keeping up with the times. The Garmin 4 and a 965 is going to track a lot of health features, including your heart rate. It's called abnormal heart rate detection, tracks your respiration rate, tracks your sleep, it gives you a sleep score. It gives you a training readiness score. After you've been doing a workout, it gives you a recovery time. It tells you your training status and it has body battery. Body battery basically gives a numerical value to your body's battery. It treats your body like a battery in that when you work out a lot, your battery is going to decrease. And when you sleep and you rest a lot, that's going to add points to your body battery. So it takes a macro perspective of your entire life and it provides a numerical value of that to tell you how recovered or how how charged up you are. It's a nice little feature. 4 and a 965 also has a morning report, which is exactly what it says. Every morning it gives you a report, it tells you how you slept, how you've recovered, it gives you your body battery, it tells you how many points you gained in the night, it gives you your weather forecast, and also gives you a little motivational quote to get you going on your day. The morning report is actually something that I've really enjoyed looking at, just because it makes those recovery metrics that have happened while I've been asleep visible for me the second I wake up. Okay, let's talk about some running features. Now, the Garmin 4 and a 965 will basically track every type of running you want to do. Well, that said, it will also track any kind of cycling you want to do, any kind of swimming you you want to do and if you want to combine all the three so it does have a multi-sport mode and a dedicated triathlon mode now, of course this isn't solely on the 965 this isn't one of those top end features it is available on less expensive garmin watches but still the triathlon mode is a biggie if you are a triathlete you definitely want to record your swim t1 your bike t2 and then your run or if you compete in swim run of course the multi-sport mode is going to be best for that you're going to be tracking your run your swim your run your swim your run your swim and you're going to get all the necessary data it does have a trail running mode which is very important important because when you use a trail running mode to run on the trails and those trails are a little more technical than running on the roads you know we're going up we're going down we're jumping over logs and rocks sometimes our heart rate is a little higher and it doesn't match up with the speed that we would be running if we were on the road because it has a trail running mode it's not going to ding your road fitness based on your trail run in fact the 4 and a 965 will actually give you a separate vo2 max for trail running 4 and a 965 also has a boatload of other running performance features you actually get a lot more wrist-based running dynamics than you used to 
too. So now the 965 is going to detect your cadence, your stride length, your ground contact time. And the only thing that you're going to need the HRM chest strap for is the ground contact time balance. So that's the ratio between how long your right foot and your left foot are landing on the ground for. But everything else is done in the watch. For a 965 has wrist-based power. And of course, now we're talking about power. You probably know that I use the stride foot pod to measure power. Of course, the 965 can connect to the stride foot pod. But while we're talking about connection, the 965 connects via Bluetooth and plus and Wi-Fi. Now, because it connects via Wi-Fi and I've got it connected to my home network, the second I walk in the door, my activity is uploaded to the cloud and it's on Garmin Connect. The 965 gives you an endurance score which is basically a measure of how well you are prepared to sustain prolonged efforts. Of course the 965 tracks your VO2 max and we get a lot of data from that VO2 max number but most importantly race predictor. It will give you your 5k, your 10k, your half marathon and your marathon predicted time. It will give you your performance condition and a new feature on the 965 is the load ratio. Now the load ratio is the ratio between your acute load and your chronic load. The acute load is your load in the last seven days, your chronic load is your load in the last 30 days. And basically this is just an indicator to make sure you are balancing your training nicely. And as far as the chart goes, anything between 0.8 and 1.5 is in the green zone. That's where we want to keep it. Now I've got to say my favorite feature on the 965 is the real time stamina. And you can add this as one of your watch faces. If you don't want it as an individual watch face, you can add it as one of the elements on one of your other watch faces. And this would be a good time to tell you that you can have a maximum of six pieces of information on each watch face. Oh, this totally slipped my mind when we were talking about health features but the Forerunner 965 also has the health snapshot. And basically when the watch is on your wrist, you're gonna to go to your activity profiles, you will scroll down and see health snapshot, and then you press start. Now it's gonna take two minutes to actually do the test. Let's speed this up just a little bit. And then when the health snapshot wraps up, you're gonna be giving a bunch of different data, your average heart rate, your SpO2, your respiration, your stress level, and your HRV. Garmin says that this could be used if you needed to send this information to your healthcare provider. But I just like to get that data and look at it myself. Another one of my favorite features on the 4965 is the altitude and heat acclimation. Now, obviously I live in Florida, about 20 feet above sea level, so getting an altitude acclimation is probably not likely here, but I can become adapted to the heat, especially in the summertime. And even though now my heat acclimation is quite low, it's only because we haven't been having super warm temperatures, but I'm really looking forward to using this feature as we get into summer next year. Now, a huge feature of the 4965 is that it does have golf. Now, if you do play golf, you might have a Garmin watch specifically designed for golf, but the 4965 has all that information included in it, and it also includes 43,000 golf courses. So the golf activity setting is going to give you the distance to the front, middle, back of greens. It's going to track your stats. It's going to measure your shot distance. It's going to give you a green view with a manually movable pin. It does pair with the Garmin Golf app and it is tournament legal. That's definitely a big deal for you golfers out there. Now I did say it does have the 43,000 golf courses and this would be a good time to tell you that it does feature full topographical maps. They are included on the watch. That's why it has 32 gigabytes of storage. Basically with the Full maps, the trail maps, the street maps, the point of interest, the big 1.4 inch AMOLED screen with 454 by 454 pixels, the mapping is going to look beautiful. And it really does. So you can upload courses with turn by turn direction. You can do round trip routing. You can use Garmin's Pace Pro feature so you can decide how you want to pace a particular event or course and then upload it to the watch and you will get turn by turn directions as well as the pace that you should be running. And if you are running in a new town or you're running on some trails and you're lost, I can really see how this will come in handy. Now the full topographical street and trail maps are not included in watches at a lower price point. So for example, the Forerunner 265, and that is one of the the bigger differences between the two. The mapping just makes navigation very easy and a treat to look at. Now I think it's time to do a little comparison with some other devices. So in the instances that we're going to be talking about now, I'm going to be comparing the Garmin 4 on 965 with the Apple Watch Ultra, the Polar Pacer Pro, and the Chorus Apex 2 Pro. Now let's talk about sleep tracking. Now I always think that sleep tracking is a little tricky, and by showing you, I'm not telling you that one watch is right and one watch is wrong, but I really just want you to see how similar or dissimilar they are. So in the next two examples, I'm going to start at the watch that recorded the most amount of sleep all the way down to the least amount of sleep. And in this first instance, the Polar Pacer Pro measured my sleep at 6 hours and 37 minutes. The Apple Watch measured 6 hours and 29.
9 minutes, 4 and a 965 measured 6 hours and 26 minutes, and the Apex 2 Pro measured 6 hours and 25 minutes. In this second example, the Polar Pacer Pro measured 9 hours and 11 minutes, the Apple Watch Ultra measured 8 hours and 51 minutes, the Apex 2 Pro also measured 8 hours and 51 minutes, and the Garmin 4 and a 965 measured 8 hours and 49 minutes. So basically, by looking at this, they're all basically in the same realm. Nothing is really standing out, except for the Polar Pacer Pro, but realistically, that's only a few minutes off. But the Garmin 4 Runner 965 is right in line with several other high-end devices. Okay, now I want to compare some GPS run data. And first of all, I want to look at how well each watch measured in totality. So which watch measured what? And in this first example, the Polar Pacer Pro measured 10.2 miles. The 4 Runner 965 measured 10.12 miles. The Apex 2 Pro measured 10.11 miles. And the Apple Watch Ultra measured 10.06 miles. In this second example, the Polar Pacer Pro measured 7.7 2 miles, the Apex 2 Pro measured 7.68 miles, the 4 Runner 965 measured 7.62 miles, and the Apple Watch Ultra measured 7.61 miles. But just so you know, the Polar Pacer Pro has a single band GPS chip, and the Apple Watch Ultra, the Chorus Apex 2 Pro, and the Garmin 4 Runner 965 have a multi band GPS chip. So that could contribute to them being more accurate or at least more similar amongst themselves. Okay, next up, I wanna look at some heart rate comparison data between those watches that I had mentioned previously. Remember, the Polar Pacer Pro, the Chorus Apex 2 Pro, and the Apple Watch Ultra. So on your screen right now, you're looking at a, well, it's a pretty basic steady state run. We can see there's a little bit of cardiac drift throughout the run, but all in all, it stays pretty stable. Now, I just wanna draw your attention to just a couple different places, but I think from a macro perspective, everything looks actually very well. So in this case, the unknown device, we can see that there's Chorus Forerunner, an unknown device, and the Polar Pacer. The purple, the unknown device, is the Apple Watch Ultra. And I think if we are to just zoom in to the beginning, we can see that the Apple Watch Ultra kind of struggles in the beginning. It goes just a little higher. Basically, all the watches are very similar. They're very similar enough. Now, right here, it does look like the Forerunner 965 does just peak for a second, goes up to 141 beats a minute when the Chorus is at 133. But that looks like it, and only for a very brief amount of time. Let's just zoom in a little closer and see this. Yeah, I think these are all definitely close enough that they're all very comparable. Now, it's important to remember that in my testing, I am only using wrist-based optical heart rate sensors. And as you know, the accuracy of wrist-based heart rate sensors can be a little tricky. They don't work perfectly all the time. Now, the 4 and 965 is using Garmin's Elevate V4 heart rate sensor. That is the most advanced heart rate sensor that they have at the moment. So it should be pretty good. And all in all, it's looking very good to me. Now, let's take a brief look at actual GPS track accuracy. And you're looking on the map right now, and to me, this is all very accurate, at least from this elevation level. Let's zoom in just a little bit, and I want to look at this footpath right here that I'm kind of running along. You can see that. So if I zoom in just a little more, we can see that all the watches are actually very good following the path. Now, the orange is the Polar Pacer Pro. That is just a little off. In fact, if we come up to this little S-bend right here, we can see that the Polar Pacer Pro is like quite a bit off. But all in all, at this level of detail, we can see that the 400 965 the Chorus Apex 2 Pro and the Apple Watch are all performing beautifully. They're sticking right to the path. Specifically, they're staying at least up here on the right side of the path, which is the side of the path that I was running on. So it's actually very impressive looking at this. Again, I want to draw your attention to this part of the course that I was running on. Again, I'm running on the path. We can see that the 4 and the 965 is on the right side of the path, which is where I was running. And then we can see right here, I take a sharp right and I keep running on the path. And in this instance right here, I would say that rounding this corner, the 4 and the 965 performed the best. It stuck to about where I was running. Now, if we look very closely, we can see that it is about probably a foot off of where I was actually running, but considering that it's getting its information from the satellites in space, this is very impressive. Now let's look at another example where I did some intervals. These were 800 meter intervals with 400 meters recovery in between. And we can see here that there is, there's a little to dig into. It does look like a lot of these watches are off, but I've already gone through this data before I'm sharing it with you. The 4965 is actually one of the best in this example. So I wanna zoom into these first couple of intervals right here. And we can see that it looks like everything except for the Apple Watch, which is the lowest data right here. It says unknown device. 
twice. Looks like they all stayed in line. Then if we come to this next interval, we can see that they all kind of stay in line, except the Apple Watch Ultra does go a little higher than the others, although that's not really high enough for me to worry about. Then on this fourth interval, it looks like on this one, the 4965 was just a little slow to get my heart rate. In fact, it didn't even get up to the heart rate that I was showing on my other devices. So let's zoom out again. Then let's take a look at these last three intervals. And the one you're looking at right now, it looks like that all the watches were recording fairly well. In this one right here, it looks like I don't know, it looks like the 4965 really dropped the ball on this one. The other three are showing a very similar heart rate and the 4965 didn't really pick up my heart rate until later in the interval. And then it gets back in the game on this final interval right here. And they all seem to be right in line, except for at this very last minute, it looks like the 4965 goes a little higher before dropping off, before realizing that I've slowed down the rest period and drops right down. So all in all, it's a mixed bag. Perhaps I didn't have the 4965 tight enough on my wrist but I have done a lot of runs with it and I'm pretty sure I did have it tight enough on my wrist but again to me it's just an example that optical heart rate sensors cannot be relied upon all the time to get the most accurate information if this was a review of one of the other watches I would have dug out information where it showed that they dropped the ball also so guys now it's time for me to hear from you I want to know do you wear a Garmin watch if not which of the competitors do you use? And is what you've seen of the Garmin 4 on at 965 enough for you to want to pick one up? Let me know in the comments. And of course, I couldn't go into every single detail of the 4 on at 965, but if there's something you want to know, just drop a comment and I'll let you know. And with that, it's Matt B. This has been my review of the Garmin 4 on at 965. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.